carbon-based bipeds. I am Scott Rose, and you are watching Explosions and Stuff. Today, I'll be reviewing the 1987 film Cherry 2000, starring David Andrews, Melanie Griffith, Ben Johnson, and Tim Thomerson. But first, a word from our sponsors. overview of the movie? In the future of 2017, it's widely accepted for people to have robots for the sake of sexual pleasure. However, Sam Treadwell has taken it a step farther and fallen in love with his cherry model robot. After it breaks down due to water damage, Sam sets out to find a new one, only to discover they are out of production. There are rumors of a stockpile of cherries in the wasteland outside the city, and Treadwell hires a tracker to help him find them. The pros of this movie? Well, first of all, this movie has an interesting view of the future. It's not just all, like, really great technology, and it's not also barren, all barren wasteland. It's a mixture of the two, and the, the rich people, they show them having all these nice things. It's kind of weird, kind of like 70s retro future, not so much the 80s future like you would expect, but it works well. It's, it's more like how they saw future in the 70s, like with a bubble dome over the sink that you just put all the water and stuff in, and kind of like, you know, you put your food in this little cupboard thing, you know, it dings and, you know, they have the food ready and they have, you know, there's a supply shortage. So they're, they're not so much building new things as much as they're making such a big deal about fixing the old stuff you have. So it's a really nice and refreshing take on the future. Also, they did a really good job of showing the difference between the rich people and the poor people. You have the rich people who live in cities like Anaheim and stuff. Who, they've got all the money. They live in the fancy apartments with the cool cars and the nice clothes and fancy sex robots. And then you've got the poor people who live in the barren wastelands. It's like the Wild West there. You know, they don't have lighting or heating. It, they, you know, they have old broken down cars or they live in like an old airplane that's, you know, been turned into a home. It's fantastic. It's so, they did such a good job showing the difference between the rich people and the poor people and letting you know that this guy, that Sam Treadwell, is out of his element. He is a stranger in a strange land. He doesn't belong there, and it's obvious, and it shows, and they did a fantastic job with that. I also like the fact that it's a nice little role change. Usually in these kind of movies, it's, you know, you have a female protagonist who has to go across this area, this treacherous part of the wasteland and thing, so she hires a male tracker. This time, you have a guy who, yes, he's looking for a sex robot, but he's still trying to get a... He has this goal that he has to go through this barren wasteland to get to, and he hires a female tracker. It's a nice change. It's a nice switch up from the whole stereotypical you know, male hero dominant, you know, strong male role. Instead, they have a strong female role. It was fantastic, and it was such a refreshing thing to see in 1987. The cons of this movie? Okay, the acting in this movie was pretty emotionless. I mean, apparently, at some point in her career, Melanie Griffith got nominated for an Oscar. If this movie is an accurate representation of her acting, that never should have happened. Oh my god, she is the worst one in the movie. It, what's it say about the acting in a movie? When the person playing the sex robot is one of the best actors in the movie. When the sex robot gives one of the best performances in the movie. What's that say about the rest of the acting? That it was crap. I didn't care about any of these people, because they couldn't make me care. I mean, one of the villain guys, I cared about him, because he was fun, and he was entertaining, and he was engaging. They did a fantastic job. Tim Thomerson nailed that role beautifully. But Melanie Griffith and the dude playing Sam Treadwell, whose name I'm not even going to bother remembering, they were horrible. 
some of the worst acting I have ever seen in my life. I didn't care about any of them. Just pure emotionless and robotic, and it was atrocious. Also, this movie didn't really have that much action in it. Okay, there were some car chases and some short little gunfights. And there was a nice little gunfight at the end of the movie. But aside from that, aside from those little bits, it was people in a car arguing or people walking around and arguing and building this sexual tension between Treadwell and the, the tracker that he hired. Building up a sexual tension between them. And I didn't care because their acting was just so bad. The, the, the action that was in this movie was boring. Whenever the bad guys try to capture Treadwell and the tracker, it was boring and I didn't care because the acting was bad. The action in this movie was practically non-existent. Which leads me to my next point. This movie feels slow. I mean, one thing I'm known for saying is that a movie has to be good enough to justify being as long as it is. This movie was an hour and a half long. It wasn't good enough to be an hour and a half long. It absolutely was not. And that's due to the lack of action, the crappy, horrific, emotionless acting, the pacing of the script. I mean, yes, when the bad guy was on screen, he was fantastic and I loved him. But every other time, anytime he wasn't on screen, I didn't care, and I felt like I was just trudging, trudging along, just suffering through it, just kind of trying to wait, wait it out, and wait it out, and get to the end, and it was just boring and slow, and I didn't care. My overall thoughts on the movie? This movie has a cult following, and I can understand why. Unfortunately, I don't share the same opinion of it, and I have to give it one thumb down. It's hard to care about a movie when the two leads are incapable of expressing emotion. I understand that people watch this movie to rip into it and make fun of it with their friends. I was just bored the whole time. Cherry 2000 might be worth watching once, but I'm never going to watch it again. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to like it and subscribe to my channel for new action movie reviews posted every week and top 10 lists posted on the 10th of every month. Also, if you have any recommendations for things you would like me to cover in the future, please leave them in the comments below and follow us on Twitter at explosions underscore TV. Thank you and have a nice day.